isomerism. We heard the word isomerism when we discussed or when you knew about the characteristics of organic compounds because most organic compounds display or exhibit isomerism. What we will tackle in this video is structural isomerism. What is structural isomerism? A structural isomer is any of two or more chemical compounds or molecules that have the same chemical or molecular formula but they differ in how they are arranged or they differ in their structural formulas. In your screen right now, you're given butane, which is the four carbon atoms in a simple alkane structure. And a butane can be rearranged, the four carbon atoms can be rearranged in another way, which we call the isobutane, in which you put one carbon on the second carbon of your parent chain. That means isobutane is named as 2-methylpropane, which is very much different with your original compound butane. However, if you count the number of carbon atoms and the hydrogen atoms for both structure, they are just the same, which is C4H10. So C4H10 is your chemical or molecular formula, but then the way you arrange them is different. And so this is how you represent a structural isomer. They share the same, the same chemical formula, but they differ in the way they're arranged. And so therefore its name is different. So isobutane is the common name for your isomer of your butane because you can only have one isomer for your butane. And then the IUPAC name for this is carbon 2, so 2-methyl, and then the parent is propane, so 2-methylpropane. In this video, I'm going to show you two examples of simple alkanes, and let me show you how to draw or identify the number of isomers. Sad to note, there's no math equation that will lessen our burden to determine how many isomers or structural isomers are possible for that compound. So we do it manually. We need to figure out how to distribute our atoms such that it will generate isomers still with the same chemical formula. And take note that when we're talking about alkanes, acyclic alkanes, that the ones that are not cyclic, the isomers of all acyclic alkanes are also acyclic. That means you can't have a cyclic um, isomer for straight chain or branch chain alkanes. Take note of that because the chemical formula will be different if you do the cyclic structure. So let's begin with C5H12. If you're given just the chemical formula and you are to um, identify its, um, its structural formula, structural isomers, all you need to do is begin with a straight chain. So C5H12 is um, this is your chemical formula and this is an this is a simple alkane because it shares the the equation CN H two N plus two, which is the general equation to determine the chemical formula of your straight chain or your simple alkanes. So C five H twelve. So the very first isomer, the simplest you can get is just to get a straight chain. So when you get a straight chain, all you need to do is line up all the five carbon atoms and when you are lining up all your four five carbon atoms then you are ready to fill it up with your hydrogen this time i'll just show you the condensed structure so if you are having this carbon here that means that's just bonded to one carbon on the right so that means you need to add three hydrogen there same with the tip here so you start with the ones on both ends because it's on the tip, so that means it's just bonded once on the left. So that means you need to add three more hydrogen. The ones in between, because they're bonded to the left and to the right of its neighboring carbon, that means this one will have H2, and this one too, and that one too. So that is the very first isomer you can get for C5H12, in which you notice that if you count all the carbon and all the hydrogen, you will get the same chemical formula. Second, Second isomer. How do we draw the second isomer? When we draw the second isomer is you start from the simplest way of branching out in which you start branching out with having one carbon. And how do we do that? That means 
if we reduce from our plain pentane here, we reduce one carbon and make it as a branch, that means our parent chain will just be four carbon. And so where will we put our other carbon which will serve as a branch? Take note, you cannot place it in the first nor in the last because it will still be like the first one. It will st still be a continuous carbon chain. So your option will be to place it either here or here because it's just the same. Correct? Because you have four. When you attach the branch here, that will be carbon two. When you attach the branch here, it will still be carbon 2 because your numbering will start from the right because that's where your branch is closest to. So either this or this will do and it will still be the same compound. It will still be the same isomer. So once we're able to figure out the right location of our first branch, then we're ready to fill it up with our hydrogen. So because this is the tip, I will just put H3 and same goes with this compound H3. And this one will serve also like the end. So that means this will still have a three. But this carbon here, because it's already bonded three times, one, two, and then three below for the branch, that means all you need to do is just add one more H, which signifies a reduction of your carbon because it branches out. And of course, this one is um, bonded to the left and to the right. So that means it, you'll just add the same two hydrogen atom. So this is an acceptable isomer of C5H12 because it still is C5H12 with one branch. So when we name this, this is 2-methyl and this is butane, correct? This is your 2-methyl butane. Now, how do we identify the last one? The last one because you can, you can see from here that there's no other possibility other than 3. And how do you do that? Reduce further the branch. Um, I mean, reduce further the parent. Instead of having four, what if we'll have three? If we will have three, one, two, three, where will we put the other two? Now, you might be tempted to put the other two together such that you'll put it here or here, which is wrong because it's going to be the same with this first. If you put two more carbons here or here, correct? Now, what if I'll put it at the middle? I'll put two C's here. If you put two C's here, your longest continuous chain will be four, which is very much the same with this. So this one is incorrect. Let's erase that for a while. This one is incorrect. So how do we make another isomer then? All you need to do is you separate your two carbon atoms. You'll have one at the top and one at the bottom. So you'll put C and C here. That way, you cannot have a butane parent chain. But instead, instead you'll just have three as your parent chain with two methyl branches. Whether you go down or you go up or you go straight, it's still a propane because it will still give you your, your parent chain, which is the longest, which is three. So that way, you're assured that that's a different isomer. And now once we're able to figure that out, we can already fill it up with our hydrogen. So our hydrogen for every tip, that means that's H3. That's an H3. This is an H3 as well. And this is an H3. No need to put any H for this middle carbon because it's already bonded four times. One, two, then three, and then four. So that means this is your other isomer for C5H12. How do you name this? When you name this, this will just be 2,2-dimethyl because it's 2-methyl, 2,2-dimethyl. And of course, your parent chain is a propane, so 2,2-dimethyl propane. So I hope I've shown to you how, your figure, how your, your, you can draw the possible isomers given a chemical formula and then be able to think and analyze really hard such that your isomers are really the accepted isomers in which its name and structural arrangement are really different. Therefore, their names are different. So let me show you the summary for all of this. So when you are, when, sorry, when you are, um, uh, sorry, I'll be.